Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm Reagan, and this is our Daniel series where we'll be walking through from chapters 7 to 12, going through the chrono-specific prophecies found within these chapters. Today we'll be going over chapter 9, a verse-by-verse -verse walkthrough linking biblical events with historical accuracy. Now, today's chapter is a favorite chapter among prophecy buffs like myself. Uh, we're going to be dealing with Daniel's 70 weeks, and it's always been a, a hot topic, and there's a couple different interpretations that are out there currently, which will go over one of the more uh, mainstream th interpretations that, to me, is the most logical, but still doesn't connect to history as well as the interpretation that I'm going to put forth today. Again, that's from Dan Bruce in his book, Daniel Unsealed, which you can go and download yourself in the description box below. So uh, let's get into it. Just like the previous chapters, we have a three-part theme going into chapter 9, part 1 being verses 1 to 19. Uh, it, after Daniel had witnessed his previous visions and had, had time to process what he'd seen, he takes time to pray to God and confess the sins of himself and his people. Part 2 is verses 20 to 23, and Gabriel comes to show Daniel the meaning of his visions. Now, part 3, we are presented with a time period defined as the 70 weeks one of the Bible's most famous prophecies within modern times. We are going to focus on part three. We may come back in later videos to part one and part two to see the significance within those parts, but we are going to stick with part three as this is where we see the, the prophecy of the 70 weeks. Here we have a timeline of the traditional view among prophecy buffs of what Daniel 70 weeks means. So there is this idea that the 70 weeks is 70 times 7, which would be 490, and that each week represents a year. So a total of 490 years is what this timeline shows. And the timeline in the popular theory here starts with the decree to rebuild Jerusalem in 457 BC. So then we see that there is a seven week period or 49 days or years after that decree and Jerusalem is rebuilt in 408 BC, followed by a 62 weeks period where an anointed ruler arrives in 27 AD, talking about Jesus, and then a final week or seven years, where halfway through we have the three and a half, where Jesus is crucified, and then the desolation begins in the second half. Uh, the final week of this interpretation is is referenced a lot when people talk about the the prophecies in the Book of Revelation. They take the seven year period and they associate it with all of the numbers within Revelation chapters 11 uh, through through 16, um, where they talk about 42 months, time, times, and half a time, uh, three and a half days, 1260 days. So a lot of that is referenced as well using the book of Daniel. What I'm going to lay out within this video is that there may not be that connection in my point of view, this may not be Dan Bruce's point of view, but in my point of view, there may not be that same connection that people think there is to this final week or seven years that people think there is a connection. My main issue with this interpretation is when we as a modern people have looked at this, and e even talking modern going back a few hundred years, uh, we are looking at this from a point of view from, from our perspective of time. We have a 365 day year that for the most part the world goes by, especially the Western world. Whereas the Jews have a 360 day year. So if we were to take this 490 year 
interpretation and times that 490 by 360, we would come out with 176,400 days. And if we took the 176,400 days and we divide it by a 365 day year, we come out with 483.2 years, which now makes these dates not add up. So now, whereas this, this traditional timeline looks like it could have worked, if we go by how the Jews count the days, the months, and the years, we are off by almost a complete seven years. And this realization, when I was looking into prophecy, uh, specifically the 70 weeks, as well as the 430 years in Ezekiel, uh, I, I came to this understanding that, that we can't be looking at it from a Gregorian point of view, where the, we have the 365 days. We have to look at it from a Jewish point of view. Um, and so it's either 360 or potentially it's how Dan Bruce puts it forth, where we count from feast day to feast day, like the Passover to Passover. So now we're just going to jump into Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Uh, I will read it out here, and then we'll go over a few things about this specific verse. So 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, and to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and profit, and to anoint a most holy place. So in these verses, there seems to be these six specific events happening within the 70 weeks. Number one is to finish transgression. So the verse starts out with 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city. So we're talking about the Jews and Jerusalem. And the first specific event is to finish the transgression. The second event is to put an end to sin. The third event is to make reconciliation for iniquity. The fourth event is to bring everlasting righteousness. The fifth is to seal both vision and profit. And the sixth is to anoint the most holy. Daniel 9, 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks, then for 62 weeks it shall be built again with squares and a moat, but in a troubled time. Verse 25 gives us three action events, and associated with these action events are two time periods, seven weeks followed by 62 weeks. The first action event is the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem. The second action event is the coming of an anointed one, a prince. And the third action event, it shall be built again with squares and moat, but in a troubled time. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar issued a decree to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. The decree in 44 BC put Hyrcanus II in authority over Judea as high priest, and Hyrcanus was also ethnarch from 60 BC to 40 BC. Dan Bruce puts forth that because high priests are anointed ones, and that ethnarchs are princes, that the coming of an anointed one, a prince, refers to Hyrcanus II. In 43 BC, Antipater and Hyrcanus completed rebuilding the defenses in Jerusalem. So when we see Daniel 9.25 say, It shall be built again with squares and moat, but in a troubled time, this is where we start the count for the 70 weeks. Antipater then died in 43 BC after completing the rebuilding of the defenses in Jerusalem, and his son Herod takes his place. Now we go to Daniel 9, 26. And after the 62 weeks, 
an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with the flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. In 28 AD, Jesus is baptized by John. He is immediately anointed and given the Holy Spirit. Now we should keep in mind that Strong's 3773, to cut off, can also be translated as made a covenant, like in Genesis 1518. So we can then read this as an anointed one, which also can be translated as Messiah, shall be cut off or shall make a covenant and shall have nothing. Rome sieges the city of Jerusalem and destroys the temple in 70 AD. So in verse 26 we read, And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. Wars, bloodshed, and desolations are decreed for the future. Daniel 9, 27 And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put an end to the sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. The one week referred to in this verse is not the 70th week, as the 70th week concludes in verse 26. This week is referring to Passion Week, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and halfway through the week he was crucified, died, and rose from the dead. And in 30 AD, Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem during Passion Week, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. Jesus is then crucified halfway through the week on Passover, and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering, because he was the final sacrifice. We then see here another semicolon after to put an end to sacrifice and offering. Dan Bruce then puts forward that after this semicolon, we see a, a uh, jump in time. And so verse 27b speaks of a future time in 638 AD when Caliph Omar conquered Jerusalem. The Temple Mound was covered under a pile of garbage, feces, and menstrual cloths. 27b reads, And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. We will now go over the six specific events within Daniel 9.24 and show where in history they were fulfilled. The first event, to finish transgression. In 40 BC, Antigonus Mattathias initiated a rebellion in Judea with the help of the Parthians. Hyrcanus II was removed from being high priest, and his ear was removed in an attempt to prevent him from becoming high priest again. Herod then fled to Rome, was made king of the Jews, and returned with a legion. In 36 BC, Herod put an end to the rebellion. The second event, to make an end of sins, and the third event, to make reconciliation of iniquity. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, indicates the coming of a new covenant, unlike the one given to Israel's fathers. So Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34 reads, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord, but this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach again each man his neighbor, and each man his brother, saying, 
Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. John the Baptist began proclaiming the new covenant sometime in 27 AD. Event number four, to bring in everlasting righteousness. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist in 28 AD. In Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17, in Christ's words, his baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. Strong's New Testament 3147, rendered as fulfilled, is most often used to indicate fulfillment of scriptures. It is used 95 times in 90 verses in the New Testament, almost all of which pertain to fulfillment of scripture. Other scriptures are 1 Chronicles 22.13, 2 Chronicles 36.21, Colossians 1.25, Matthew 2.23, and Matthew 2.17. The fifth event is to seal up vision and profit. Some of the scriptures to indicate of the sealing are John 627 which reads do not work for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to eternal life which the son of man shall give to you for on him the father even god has set his seal other scriptures are isaiah 6 9 to 10 isaiah 29 10 to 14 and matthew 13 10 to 17 Jesus was essentially sealed from the religious leaders of the day. The visions in the book of Daniel have also been sealed until all the prophetic events predicted have occurred. And the final event, to anoint the most holy. When Jesus was baptized by John, he was given the Holy Spirit and anointed. Jesus' baptism symbolically represented his death, burial, and resurrection. This single event marked the end of the 70 weeks time period put forth in verse 24. We have covered a lot of information within just a few verses in Daniel chapter 9. So here is a graph or a timeline that Dan Bruce has created for you to, to visually see all of the events. So the start of the 70 weeks starts on Pentecost of 42 BC after Caesar's 44 BC decree, the Wall Street rebuilt in 43 BC. New Sabbath cycle started on the 1st of Nisan, 42 BC. So from 42 BC to 36 BC, we have seven weeks or seven Pentecosts, which then comes to Herod the Great captured Jerusalem to finish the transgression. Rebellion of Antigonus brings Hyrcanus II back to the city in 36 BC. So after the first week, first seven, I'm sorry, the first seven weeks, we have the transgression being stopped. Then, after 62 weeks, from 35 BC to 27 AD, John the Baptist began proclaiming the new covenant on or soon after Pentecost 27 AD. So that fulfilled the second and the third events. And the 70th week, the final week, or final year would have been between 27 AD and 28 AD with the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist 40 plus days before Passover of 20 AD, 28 AD. So the end of the 70 weeks on Pentecost 28 AD to be fulfilled before 28 AD to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and prophecy or to seal up the vision and prophet, to anoint the most holy.
right here it shows a complete 70 weeks and dan bruce associates the word weeks and he goes into it in his book as pentecost or pentecost as the feast of weeks so as we see from his start point and his end point we have exactly 70 pentecosts and we completely see the fulfillment of verse 24 and the six events that are laid out that are supposed to happen within these 70 weeks chapter 9 is a mind-boggling one for me because it doesn't seem to have a very easy answer but once we get through all of the information and we're able to, to verify the historical events that through the documents we have this timeline and this interpretation again is is the most accurate one that i have seen compared to all of the rest and so this brings us to the end of our daniel chapter 9 walkthrough and like i said we will potentially go back through the first two parts of daniel 9 and see what their significance is in a later video but for now we'll leave it here and again don't take anything in this video as absolute truth I, I, I am not an authority I want you to take this information and dig into it yourself and and explore remember to do it prayerfully and and to do it with a open loving heart anyway god bless you have a wonderful day i will see you in the next video